Equatorial Guinea has once again been honored with this new distinction awarded to the First Lady Constantia Mangedo Obian. It is effective and official. The First Lady of Equatorial Guinea, Constantia Mangedo Obian, received the Pan African uh, Merit Pan African Award of the First Ladies this August 20, 2018, in Malabo at the Sipopo Congress Hall before the state. Uh, personalities who gathered to witness the remarkable event organized by the Africa, Africa Media, African Council for the Media for the Pan-African Television African Media. The goal of the program Merit Pan-African, the premier dam that in court is to highlight the actions of the African First Ladies who benefit from the vote of viewers. First, Madam Constancia Mangado Obiang was crowned the winner of the 2017 edition. She stands out in a positive way through humanitarian actions across the continent and beyond. She is also known for her commitment to the women through concrete acts, solidarity activities, unity and the dignity of women in all its forms. Russia has been striving with little notice to become another major player on the continent Africa as it expands its strengthened and strengthened ties with several African nations. The scramble for the continent Africa remains a reality. Many countries have strengthened ties with Africa in all domains including economic, security, military. The most renowned is Russia-Africa ties. During the Cold War, according to report, the Soviet Union's influence on African state was widespread and deep. However, Russia's global ambitions have grown and the country has sought to reassert its uh, relations with the continent Africa. It is worth noting that the Soviet Union offered African independence movement valuable material and ideological support as they sought liberation from their Western colonizers. Russia provided training and education to many African ladies. According to pundits, Russia is making a strong comeback after years of inactivity and now aims to rival European countries. At present, Russia's foreign trade turnover with Africa is about $12 billion, which is a rather modest achievement. Nevertheless, the African continent remains a rather promising market for Russian industrial goods. The question is what do its policies of engagement in Africa indicate about its intentions on the continent and beyond? It is always a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, having you on this platform of the Pan-African debate, of course, will be there for one or 30 minutes to brainstorm on the two topics uh, I just introduced to you. And of course, I'll not be alone today um, with uh, some panelists who are going to give us an uh, in-depth uh, analysis uh, on the topics, uh, uh, focal points for today. And of course, uh, let's uh, know who we'll be talking to. Now let's start uh, by introducing them. Well, we have uh, Mr. Kao, Tabon Kao. You're most welcome to the debate. Yeah, thank you very much for, having invite, for inviting me here. I know before I go on, I'll first of all start by greeting some of my bosom friends in Bopi, Chinedu and Basalim, my wife Galashi Milen, and uh, a very important personality beside me too, uh, Madame Bihelen Gimbis. So that is it, Clarice. Let's go on with the debate. Okay, thanks for being there. And now we have uh, Mr. Taro. You are most welcome to the debate. Good afternoon, uh, Clarice. I'm very grateful for inviting me for Pan African debate. And I also want to say good afternoon to all the viewers of African media all over the world, the technician and the director general and all other panelists on seat. Thank you very much for your invitation. Okay, thank you also for joining us. Uh, let's uh, also recognize this important personality, Sheikh Mohammed. You are most welcome. 
Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, I call upon all Africans, wherever they may be, and all of, uh, individual, individuals of goodwill uh, to join together to, for the good of Africa and for the prosperity of uh, Africa, wherever it may be. Mushadin al kiram Assalamu alaikum. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, move now to the political capital of Cameroon, of course, Yaoundé, to meet uh, Mr. Shu Gerard. You are most welcome to the program. Mr. Shu Gerard. Okay, he will be joining us uh, later, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, we are talking uh, the uh, relationship between uh, Russia and the continent Africa. And of course, we are talking about uh, this award uh, of excellence given to the First Lady of Equatorial Guinea in the person of uh, Madame Constancia Manga de Obianga. Now, uh, we, we are going to analyze the role of women we know of uh, this uh, Merit Pan-African Award, the 2017 edition award was handed to the First Lady of Equatorial Guinea, given uh, her role in uh, in trying to impact, possibly be impact uh, Equatorial Guinea, and of course, beyond, uh, let's start with you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sheikh Mohamed. Uh, what have you to say about uh, the First Lady of Equatorial Guinea? Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is this issue should not be taken from the paradigm of the divide between men and women. There is no war or conflict between men and women, neither in Africa nor anywhere in the world. And all the cultures we've got in Africa give value to women. We don't need any lessons from Europeans. Uh, where you have the current Angola, the, the, the last African leader who was there before the Portuguese took over was Zinga. Zinga was a woman who had an army of more than 100,000. If you look at the history of Islam, one of the, the, the second successor to the Prophet called Umar ibn Khattab appointed a woman as the controller of the market of Medina, the, the, which was a whole town, the most the strongest economic uh, uh, hub at the time. So we, need, we don't have any struggle between men and women. But that said, we must also realize that corruption is one of the uh, diseases we have in Africa. Uh, a study by the African Union in 2002 revealed that corruption costs Africa $150 billion a year. That is very high compared to the total aid obtained from uh, outside countries, $22.5 billion. And corruption in Africa goes from the very high political grab to the policeman on the street. And one of the ways this corruption enters society is through the so-called NGOs, because the minister wouldn't get uh, money from someone physically like that. You're looking for uh, the contract to build a road, for example, which is worth three billion, and the minister has an NGO somewhere which is uh, titled to be against or fighting for street children or AIDS or whatever, and then the minister will usually be very, very uh, inclined to give you the contract if he can, you can provide proof Definitely. that you have contributed to this NGO. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about uh, NGOs, we should realize that not everything which, hap which appears is what it seems to be. The third thing which we have to consider is that nowadays, uh, celebrity and efficiency or whatever popularity can be bought with the media. In those days before the media revolution, in order to become popular, you had to help a lot of people. You had to stand for good and promote love, like Jesus Christ of Nazareth, like uh, Martin Luther King, like uh, Malcolm X and so on. But nowadays, by spending a few million dollars on the media, you can become a world hero. So when, when they talk of population voting for somebody, what do the population know about what that person has done, apart from what the media shows to them? So in other words, I'm trying to say that uh, this vote, apart from being symbolic in the sense that it might encourage certain things, we should not use it as a proof that the actors who are involved are actually what they claim to be. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Tower, looking at the, the, the first lady of uh, Equatorial Guinea, we know uh, <coughs> she, 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 she has been uh, actively involved in saying into it that the women, especially the rural women, are emancipated. Do you think she actually deserves this award? Firstly, thank you for the question you have just asked me. 
Uh, firstly, I'm going to pick the importance of a woman from the point of the Bible, according to my occupation. The Bible declared that God said that a man should not live alone, that he will give him an admit. You have to realize that the role of woman is very, very important in this world that we are living, and is an admit to his to her husband. That what the Bible declared, and according to the reward that was given to Costania Mange de Obingia, the wife of the president of Equatorial Guinea, I believe, according because I will, I usually watch Mary Parafican the Premier Dams, and every time that I have an opportunity to vision the the program, but according. It was voted according to the gesture that people saw, the work that he had performed, the impact he has made over the women and over the, the equatorial in particular, because she was a first lady of equatorial Guinea, not the first lady of the world, according to his own area of, according to her own area of profession. Now, I can tell you that she really worked it. Because if you look what is happening in the world today, I and mean, many people have wrongly quoted it that be behind, it's not behind. Behind of a successful woman, there is always a woman. But I, I want to tell you today, it's not behind a successful man. They are beside a successful man. It should be beside now. Because if you look, According, because I'm analyzing it from the point of the Bible, that when a woman joins to his husband, they have one, which means is every time the woman has to be beside of her husband, according to the Bible. And I believe, according to the voting from the um, um, what's up, uh, calling, and all of that thing, that made her to become the first lady. In 2017, the winner of 2017 Pan Africa Merit. And I believe she won the merit because of what he helped her husband to accomplish in Equatorial Guinea. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, now to you, my Mr. Kala. The president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, once said, women hold the key to Africa's development. I want you to link this with the activities of the First Lady of Equatorial Guinea. Women hold the key to economic uh, Africa's development. Can you see it visible in the activities of the First Lady of Equatorial Guinea? Thank you, Clarice. <laughs> We all know that behind or beside any successful young man or any successful young man, you must find or see a strong, very strong lady. That is, you know, you've just quoted a president which I love so much in Africa, which is Paul Kagame, what he has done in his country from after the genocide to today. He has really made Rwanda a great nation again. If we come to Equatorial Guinea, where you have Madame Obiang Gema, who you've seen what is happening in Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea is rapidly developing because there is somebody telling the president of Equatorial Guinea, Obiang Gema Bazogo, which is not far from the person that God said, one plus one is one. Therefore, me, if a woman and a man comes together, they become one. So it therefore means that most of the work that has been done in Equatorial Guinea is as a result. It is because there is somebody closer to the president of Equatorial Guinea, which is Madame Constancia Obiang, advising the president, advising the husband to do this. When it comes to the rural area, you will really understand that I am coming to the, um, let me take you to the way where most of African, most of those in Central Africa, United Central Africa, I mean the Semak region, most of the especially Cameroonians are living they say, are leaving Cameroon to Equatorial Guinea to see whether they can have jobs or maybe earn a good living and to an extra helping their own families back home in, in Cameroon. It is because Obiang Gema with 
the very strong lady Constantia decided that Equatorial Guinea must be a nation to be respected in Africa. That is why when you get to Equatorial Guinea, you see places like Malabo. That is why Equatorial Guinea has been able to organize two African nation corps, of which a great nation like Cameroon has. A great nation like Cameroon organized a nation corps since 1972. They have all the infrastructure because the lady behind did not disturb memory do not disturb the memory of the president we have today. He instead accompanied the president to achieve what Equatorial Guinea has achieved today. But I will not end there. I will also tell our first ladies in Central Africa, which I know in Central Africa and Africa in particular, I will also tell them to advise their husband at times to take certain good decisions. Like the very good decision, they will not sit and watch their husband ruin African, especially those of the Central African, especially those of the Semak zone. Because most of our youths are leaving African territories to Europe. Some even trek from the, from, from, from trek passing through the trans saharan Desert. Some die in the Mediterranean Sea. This is because some of our leaders have failed. And if you see somebody failing, if you get a man who is legally married failing, therefore me the woman, the woman he has beside him, help him to fail. They should see into it. This first, I'm talking to the first, first ladies in Africa. Please, they should see into it that they keep on disturbing the ears of their husband. Like a mosquito disturbing your ears that our children and youth are leaving our continent every day abroad for greener pasture. That please do something for these children. By doing those things, most of African leaders and first ladies should tell them that are engaging themselves in a humanitarian, humanitarian, humanitarian issues, they should tell their husband, please create companies and employ these young men, these young men, create, give, give, put a site where each Af and Africa will not be ready to leave his continent to another continent. That is what we want this first lady to do. We know most of their engagement in humanitarian, humanitarian issues like maybe taking care of HIV, taking care of those with HIV AIDS, taking care of the, the, the needy. Before we came to before we came to maybe those who I need, those who need something, those who need help, it is because there was poor governance. They should also tell their various husband, please, we need good governance. And they should not. They should also advise the husband that please, we need what we call we need fresh people. Most of them, most of this president, are of age. Our first lady too should tell them that let's go on retirement and see how we can allow the youth or another person to take over the country. Thank but, you very much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for for the for that uh, in depth uh, analysis. Uh, and uh, I will talk about this when you look at the first lady of Equatorial Guinea. I want to emphasize because we want to really show to the world that she has actively been working to ensure positively uh, to the. Okay. Uh, Yawunde is uh, already ready. Uh, and uh, before I ask you this question, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, let, let us visit uh, Mr. Shu Gerard uh, in Yaoundé. If you can hear us, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much, uh, Clarice. Um, I think that um, the First Lady of Equatorial Guinea. Uh, what they have said about how what she have done, we all know is correct, is good. But I think that other women can also do it. <laughs> if a young girl is a wife of a head of state, she can also do the same. The question is that she has been receiving all this award, all this award for a year, but remember that they, have, they are still too long in power. They came to power in 1989, till now they are dead. So they are receiving this award, people that are clapping for her, personality are clapping for her, she's wooing money from NGOs all over the world, it is a good act. The question is that, are all the monies going to the poor people? Is she really doing what we want people to do when you are in power? They are in position, they have stayed for long in power. All the people who have a year of election rigging, Kuchira Guinea, no respect of constitution. Why cannot, because I heard one of my colleagues in the studio saying that uh, she has been urging the husband to do this and this. 
There's also tell the husband to relinquish power, to respect the constitution, to go down, so that another leader can come up and do what a head of state is supposed to do. Definitely. If the head of state is doing something in the country, she is doing it using the forms of the state, not her personal forms. So I think that the wife of uh, Oduan Gemban Bazogo, Mrs. Uh, Constanza, uh, 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 she's doing well, but I think that it is high time for them to respect the constitution, to respect the people of Equatorial Guinea, and they step down. Oh, the mother said, okay, during the next coming election, I will not take part again in the election so that other people can take off. It will be good. Because so that we should give the youth the opportunity, the, the new politician opportunity to also do their own part, I but contribute their own quarter let in me, developing. Let, let me give the you nation. this. Let me Thank give you. you this questioner. We, we for if you uh, actually know how she has been involved, because the first lady, this first lady we are talking about, has been actively involved as far as youth are concerned, because she has made sure that child soldiers child soldiers and then uh, uh, access to education i'm sure that concerns you we're trying to evaluate the positive aspect of 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 it all we know other aspects but now let's see does she really stand out to be that uh, renowned woman that is like an example to other first ladies in the continent africa as far as child soldiers are concerned access to uh, education and what of you Uh, she is doing that. She has received a lot of award, honorable causa. Uh, she has been the chairperson of the aid committee. She has been fired against child soldier. Yes, what I'm saying is that all what she is doing is commended. It is good. We need people who have the opportunity to help others, who have opportunity to make others to be where they are supposed to be, to do as what she is doing. Shamtal Bia of, of Cameroon, she is doing that also. Now, what she is doing is condemnable. It is good. But the other part is that other people can also do it. That she have done for so, for so long. Let her also give opportunity for, I mean, for other people to do it. So that the world can, I mean, so that the world can be a safer place to live. She has come out to be, she has turned out to be a, a, a fundamental figure in the evolution of women in Equatorial Guinea. I think that women should learn from her. Whatever, wherever they are, what position they hold, they should also learn from her. To do the humanitarian gesture, the social services, to help others. Because money is bait. If you have money, you don't help people, you don't help the poor, then that money is useless. You are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. What she is doing is right. But opportunities also be given to other people she should also go down route to i mean to qc i mean to the border i mean an old woman there i mean the old farmer there i also give her an award i say mama thank you very much for what you have been doing you have been farming for, for many years you have been cultivating supplying food give only the rural women also a trophy so that they should also be encouraged so that's what we're saying we're not condemning that she is bad but we're saying that opportunity is given to her to do it but the time has come for some of them to also advise Oduan Gaman Bazago say, my husband is a president, let us also give uh, 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 the chance to other people to also uh, test what power is. Okay, uh, all right, thank you also, uh, Mr. Shio Gerard. Uh, let me give you this last question before we move to our second uh, topic. Uh, now we want to analyze this aspect. Uh, does this, I'll quote this musician who said, Lucky to be. We celebrate heroes every day, but we forget the woman. Do you think this is an opportunity for the world at large to come to know that the woman has her place as far as uh, nation building is concerned, as far as decision making is concerned? Do you share that view that we forget women and obviously they are the, 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 the people who hold the key to, to development as Kagame will say? Uh, thank you, madam. Like I said previously, uh, we should not get into the paradigm of fighting between men and women, of rivalry between men and women. We should just recognize talent where it is. Definitely. And if in Britain, at a certain time, Margaret Thatcher 
showed the potential and the capability of handling the affairs of the British Empire better than everyone else, then I would congratulate her, not because she is a woman, but because she was a good prime minister. So the, the, the other thing which we should know is that as we act in society, the uh, injustice, what am I called, social injustice, sure. makes, it, makes it such that the spotlight is usually only on certain people and not on others. What I'm trying to say here is that there might be some women there in Equatorial Guinea who are making a bigger effort in terms of what they have as input and what they have as output. That's how you measure the effort. In other words, someone who received 100,000 CFA and spent everything to help the poor has done more than the one who received billions and because she happens to be first lady, all the uh, cameras will be on her. There's this parable of a woman in the church where, uh, when uh, people were giving huge amounts in the time of Jesus Christ. And people were saying, oh, such and such has contributed. And this lady gave a very small piece, the equivalent of perhaps five francs today. And Jesus, alayhi salam, highlighted to the people that that woman has contributed more than all the others. Because when the others gave millions, there were billions left with them. But this woman gave everything she owns. So the uh, first lady has done a good job. But we should not all think that she's the only one working in Africa, nor that she's even the best. There might be some other people who do not have the spotlight on her, on them, and who are doing much better. So the general conclusion is all Africans, be they men or women, should join together without rivalry between each other to fight for the progress and unity and uh, uh, development of Africa. Definitely, they should come together as uh, the president of uh, Uganda will always say that is Yoruba Savani. When Africans will come together and reconcile their ideologies, they would obviously take the continent to the position that is the number one position. They want it to be here. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us here on to the Pan-African debate, now we are talking the relations between Russia and the continent Africa, we are talking international cooperation. Uh, as we know, or as we heard uh, in our preamble, Russia has been making a comeback uh, to the African continent. And we're asking the question, why? And we're asking the question, is this cooperation going to be beneficial or to be a 50-50 something uh, for the Russian and the Africans? Uh, let us take you to this question, uh, Mr. Kao. What can you say in your opinion? Do you think uh, Russia actually needs Africa, given its position in the world? Uh, <laughs> is, you know, the scramble for Africa started early on, not today. It started since before 1884, where most European countries were scrambling for Africa. In that case, some nations thought that those who were going to Africa never knew what they are doing. They thought that Africa was a very poor territory because they consider us as primitive people. They got some went to an extent considering us as monkeys. Today, it's not for it's not when you get back to the Bible, you look on you, you come you realize that Africa is at the center of the earth. Therefore, I mean, it's the garden of Eden which God, which the Bible is talking about. The God of Eden is Africa. So, when most of these European countries discovered that Africa was so rich, some thought that petrol could be the only petrol could be the only resource a nation needs. Today, they are coming to realize that Africa is not only rich in petrol, rich in other resources. Africa is not only rich, maybe in copper, gold, and all the like, but Africa also is also rich as far as the soil is concerned. So, countries like the United States of America, which who was never involved in the scrum for Africa, and Russia in particular, today they have come to realize that they made a mistake not to, involve, not to be involved in the scrum for Africa. I would like to tell you one another thing. This allied power, this European, with the, Ameri the, the American, they decided to share the world in between them. Why America was interested in the Middle East, Russia interested in the Middle East, Europeans were interested in, in Africa. Now that, they, now that Russia and America have come to realize that they made an error, that Africa is not only a market, because the scramble of Africa was based on economic reasons, 
political reason and social and humanitarian reason. But the main thing that brought the European nation in Africa was the economic reason, no other thing. Now Russia has come to realize that, America has come to realize that Africa is a good market for their goods, especially their weapons. I am coming now to Russia. If Russia is coming to Africa to really trade with Africa, it should be that they are coming in good, they are coming in good faith. If they are coming in bad faith, it will be, it will be, it will be so bad. They would like provoke another third world war. Because most of these Europeans, if they discover that Russia and America are invading Africa, they will not allow, they will not sit and watch Russia and America invade Africa. This may cause another third world war. Because the, the second world war came as it came to when all, all German territory was seized overseas. It was because of economic economic reasons. Now, if Russia is coming, because Russia, Russia is already has taken the Central African Republic already. Russia again has taken Namibia. Russia has taken um, it should be um, uh, Namibia and uh, let's say I don't know whether it's Angola mm -hmm. to sell their weapons. I do not know whether the Woody's weapons are weapons of mass destruction or they are coming to help us Africans to teach us on how to have an atomic bomb so we can also frighten them like the person in, in, in North Korea is doing so that they should allow our resources for us to really see for us to see how we can sell our resources whether we do business on 50-50 or we continue doing business on 90 90, uh, 90, why the European have 90 percent? We have maybe, maybe 10 or 4 percent. That is what I want. To, that is what I am asking. I really want to know. I'm asking Russia. They should tell us whether they are coming to do business in Africa in good faith or in bad faith. They will be thinking that they are coming to Africa is a blessing, or which maybe they are coming to uh, they, 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 if they enter Africa it will be instead a curse. That is what we are afraid. Okay. All right. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Taro, now let's look at recently uh, Russia signed a, a military accord with the Central African Republic. Uh, this question uh, I want to ask is why uh, is it that when Western powers or when powers are coming into the continent, they focus more on the, the, the defense? We know Africa is facing uh, many problems of terrorism, insecurity. Will this help? the continent or the country. We know Central Africa is actually undergoing uh, turmoil at the moment. Will this uh, military pact help to boost the fight against terrorism in the country and continent as a whole? Thank you very much, uh, Clarice. What, firstly, what I want to say that so that I don't monopolize words. After the dissolution of the Soviet, Soviet Union yeah, yes. in 1990, when Putin came in into power, he realized a lot of things that he has to come back to Africa. And he now introduced a foreign policy that we monitor, control the economy of Africans and uh, their own economy. And he so put value on it. That is the main reason why Putin, the President Putin, came back to Africa. I will tell you that uh, concerning, I'm going to come back because I want to analyze this area in four category, yeah. which I noted. What is the Russia position in African continent today. Yeah. Secondly, what are the main field of intervention of Russia in our continent? And thirdly, what is the future that Africa and Russia have together? And lastly, on what basic in base cooperation between Russia and African continent? And I want to tell you firstly when I analyze all these things, and I say that because Putin put, he placed power on geopolitical relation and Russia dominance, he saw a need to build a new power block that could be considered mutual beneficial. What Russia trying to do is that they are not coming 
because there will be a cost to African country. But because you know that Russia is one of the power country all yeah. over the world, mm -hmm. and they are on their own. They don't have any influence. Nobody, no country have any influence over Russia. Neither USA, China, and because Putin knew all these things, he now put it down. I have to go back to African country and talk with the leaders of African country. And she he started coming in after 20th century. Then when he came in now, he now realized, what can I do? Because I did them something research. I noticed that in 2005 and between 2005 and 2015, Russia and Africa witnessed 185 growth in terms of trade and investment in Africa. This are the what which means they came for 50-50 gain. Absolutely. The, uh, that is what Russia is after. Now, in, and when it now came to that point now, what are the main fields of intervention in Africa? Russia energy interests include oil, gas, and nuclear with state-owned companies investing both in northern and southern Africa. You will see that Russia security influence include large representative in peace making. Russia also have an intention in peacemaking. That is the reason why Central African Republic now call them in, sign an agreement with them. Now, we need your assistant to come and train our military men how to carry guns. Not because they didn't know how to carry guns before, yeah. but they have a very, to me, they have a good intention. intention towards Africa, but because they have m missed it in the before and they want to recover it all. And later I will talk about the uh, other you, you are indirectly saying that Africa actually needs Russia. Africa actually needs Russia. Okay, uh, Sheikh Mohamed, uh, this, let's uh, analyze the issue of, uh, of uh, the monetary issue. Russia is, a, is already a major power, as we know. And we know Africa, according to some uh, analysts, the economies of African countries, they're not growing because of financial dependence. Do you think Africa coming to Af uh, Russia coming to Africa will help uh, the continent attain uh, that financial independence. We know of uh, the Frank CFA that the everybody have been battling and, 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 and saying it is because uh, Africa does not have its own uh, 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 good monetary policies that it's not helping in the economics of the countries. Uh, thank you very much. Madam, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, this issue is a very complicated one. It goes right back, I don't even know where to start. You see, uh, right from the education we receive in school, we are being given lies. History, another way of putting history is to say history. In other words, the history of Africa is written by Europeans. The first world war, so-called, was a monetary problem. It was a problem of a few people who created a fictitious uh, usury based monetary system and uh, they tried to use that to influence certain powers which refused and they waged war in order to bring them down. Uh, Abraham Lincoln of America also rebelled against this banking cartel and he was killed. Kennedy rebelled and he was killed. Gaddafi rebelled and he was killed. What is this banking cartel? It's a situation where a few people give themselves the right to print money and then just spend the money. And others have to work to earn that money. Between 2007 and 2010, the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank of America, which is a privately owned bank, printed more than $26 trillion, which they just spent and others have to work. Russia was one of 23 countries which is trying to get away from this dollar hegemony. Sure. Gaddafi tried that and was killed because Gaddafi tried to create an African monetary fund and also to make an African currency. 
uh, Vladimir Putin, you're right, he published once on the internet that if Africa could create their own currency, he gave his word that Europeans would immigrate to Africa. It would not be Africans immigrating to Europe. Definitely. But that said, does he really want to help Africa or is he just, he just want to get his own share of the cake? That is the question. Mm -hmm. Um, if he really wants to help Africa, my brother recently mentioned nuclear weapons. Why does Russia have to sell weapons? A military expert in a Canadian military school did a study which revealed that if African countries were willing to put aside just one third of what they are currently spending on defense and recruit people from the former Soviet Union, qualified engineers, with the raw materials we have in Africa, we will be able to manufacture all the weapons we are currently using in Africa, in Africa, without having anything come from abroad. Nuclear weapons, he mentioned. Do we have to get that from somewhere else? In Niger, you've got uranium. You extract the uranium, and then you reach between uranium 235, extracted from uranium 238, and you already have the fissile material which can be used to create nuclear weapons. Grenades, which are launched by the army, can be manufactured from cassava, such. Is, there are not things which have to be imported. So if Russia really wants to help Africa, they should not be selling arms, but they should help Africa produce their own arms. But they will not do that, because then Africa will really become independent. So they are just trying, we are just, they're trying to use Africa like in this geopolitical chess game. And it's up to the Africans to be able to take advantage of the situation, to get away from victim consciousness and, become, and go to self-empowerment, where we are trying to do our own things ourselves. It is, not, it is not for, for nothing that the president of Nigeria, Major Buhari, uh, said recently that Nigeria should manufacture all its own weapons. No country can really become independent unless you produce your own arms. People will use the sale of arms to condition the direction things go. If two parties are fighting and Russia supports one particular one, you will sell arms to that party and not the other. So by just giving arms, they can use arms to influence the direction which things take place in Africa against the will of what part the majority of Africans wants. So the Africans should stop relying on people bringing arms from outside. So they should stop relying from aid from outside. They should try to do their own things themselves. Okay. Uh, at this particular moment, uh, we have a caller online calling right away from, uh, all mm. the way from Canada. Please, can you tell us your name and then you go on with your contribution. Hello. Good morning. Good morning Good to you, sir. Yes. Yeah, my name is Simply. I'm calling from Canada. Okay, go on with your contribution. You are most welcome. Okay, I, I just want to talk about Obian. Uh, Obian is a uh, house uh, quality that are based on, on uh, three pillars, pillars that I'm, I'm going to mention here. Good listener, open to advice, and humble. The development of Guinea Equatorial did not happen in, on one blow. This has been progressive steps over the years. And that's the result that we see today, opposed to other France African presidents who are the biggest procrastinator on earth. Talking about women, women are transition between pre birth and post birth, which is the key of life of any living soul today, and deserve the most respect in the life. The entry of Russia and other powerful nations in Africa point out to the end of French emotionally in Africa and the end of France, Africa. You are talking about the financial tendons. I would say that if you go to the France CFA, that is a currency that really uh, reframed the economy of Africa when it is not allowing the development of human beings. This is a currency that is used for the underground economy and should be banned in the circulation. We're talking about France, France could not imagine just one instant that the economy are volatile. It's, sad, it's a pity for France. They will understand the mistake 100 years later because many polit economical and military actors, pow most powerful than France, are making the entry in Africa. And it will not stop there. If France has conquered Africa, economically, maybe it could create a balance between the difficulty of impose themselves industrially in other Western nations. I, have, I have went to uh, the United States and Canada. I could not see even a single car made of France, even in the French region of Canada. You could see many Japanese, Sweden, and English cars piling up here. 
Farmers should stop acting as gangster state in Africa. That's the end of my contribution. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you to you, sir, for your contribution. Uh, Mr. Shu Gerard, if you're with, uh, with us, uh, this question to you. Let's uh, analyze the statement uh, made by the president of Gabon, Ali Bongo, saying uh, Africa needs Russia. What can you say about this statement? Because it's, it's really open when Ali Bongo says Africa needs Russia. He made the statement while meeting uh, uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. Can you give more analysis uh, on this uh, statement? Thank you very much. You see, I smile over the statement because um, if a president says... Africa need Russia. Yes, we all need a friend. I need you, you need me. If I'm, if I'm going in a different way, you can help me up. Now, why do we say Africa? Why did he say Africa need Russia? Why? In terms of what? That's the Russia question. is coming to Africa for different motives. We all know that Russia has a, a different intention of coming to Africa. Permit me. To examine Russia in this in this era before I come before I come to the intention of Russia in Africa. But the statement that the president of, uh, of Gabon made that Africa need Russia, for me, I don't see it to be correct. That he needs Russia to support him, to fuel protesters, to support him to give him arms, to support him to rig election, to remain in power, to, to facilitate. He portioned in power and his family. We all know that Russia, since the coming of President Vladimir Putin in power in Russia, I mean in, in Russia, things have never been the same. Russian report card during Putin is right in Europe. We all saw, all of us are monitoring what is happening, what Russia is doing. We all saw Russian invasion of Crimea, promoting international terrorism in Ukraine. He has cut away Donyat, a part of Ukraine, sponsoring his language in Ukraine so that the Ukrainians should be learning Russian language so that he would say that it is part of Ukraine. We saw a Russian ambassador who was in Yaoundé here, he made a statement that one day uh, 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 the Ukrainian uh, uh, head of state will regret and that they will take over Ukraine from, I mean, it is a, a big statement, a statement is unacceptable. We find Russia sponsoring international terrorism. The Malaysian airliner was brought down by who? By Russian uh, sponsored rebels in Ukraine. We saw Russia poisoning her own citizen in Britain. We all know the spawning scandal where the London Russian diplomat were being expelled from, uh, from, from Russia. We also we see Russia comparing himself with the United Nations um, Amer 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 of America, having an election in Russia, trying to influence King Jong Un of North Korea to keep producing weapons of mass destruction on which everybody in the world is against. We saw Russia mingling with international, that is, Putin is, if you are dealing with President Putin of Russia, he is a tactic cunning politician. He's come to account with different intentions. We saw him in, in, in Syria, what he's doing in Syria, bombing everywhere in Syria, uh, supporting the government of Syria to use a chemical weapon to bomb. You know, uh, you all know the 500 people were killed, men, women, and children in the in south of Damascus. You see weapons of mass destruction, chemical gas, urine. So, Russia is the intention of the of, of the politician in Russia is evil. We also the foreign minister Lavrov, who is channeling the Russian policy, always making negative statements, always saying Russia is ready, is ready, is ready. Now, coming to Russia and telling Africa, my sister, I tell you. In 1999, RFI reporter report that Russia would train Congolese army and equip them. They all agreed. Russia cooperation with the CAR, with the Central African Republic, is to say that okay, is to, is to send a message to all African countries. Okay, I'm now in Central African Republic. I have an armed depot. If you need weapons to fight, don't go far. I will send them to you. That's the intention of Putin coming to Central African Republic. We all see. The destabilization of Africa is caused by the West. He is saying that, okay, now that there are a lot of conflict in Africa, uh, the arms will be cheap. If one cheap arms come to me, I'll give you. And that is the intention. 
We all saw Russia want to straighten her own way post industry in the process. A British think tank, a Chatham, how show that 3% of Russian weapons are exported to Africa. 3% of Russia are exported to Africa. 3% are exported to Africa. For what? To sponsor terrorism. To promote armed conflict. We are suffering Africa today because of Western belligerent, because of them. We all know that the, 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 the government in the, um, in the car is weak. On that uh, uh, first thing, the government is weak. Because the government is able to contain a, a, a revolt in, in the country. Inviting a foreign power to help Russia is a problem. So, okay, okay. Uh, my sister, yeah. uh, uh, we should be, be, be skeptical of Russia intention in Africa. It is for good yet, yeah. if for bad, we all know. Def Thank you. Definitely, uh, we are yet to uncover the hidden agenda, if actually there is one. Uh, let's talk about trade, uh, Mr. Tabon Kao. Uh, as we heard uh, in our introduction, I said uh, Russia's foreign trade turnover with Africa is about $12 billion. We already know Russia is a ready-made country, as I can put it. Does it coming to Africa mean a new era in the economic transformation? Because all we're talking about is to see that Africa is developed and stop depending on others. Does Russia's coming to Africa mean a new era in the economic transformation of the continent? Uh, Clarice, you know, if I'm asked to choose between Russia and France, even though all one the other one is maybe diving in water and the other one is maybe meeting fire, I will prefer Russia. I will prefer Russia. Because if Russia is coming to Africa, I'll first of all let me I'll first of all get back right up to the Western world, what Russia has been doing. You know fully that without the presence of Russia in Syria, like this uh, Bashar Assad wouldn't have been there today. Because Europeans wanted Bashar Assad out of that particular uh, out of Syria. But Russia said no. Knowing fully that, this is European and American, knowing fully that Russia is not a country to reckon with, they decided to. You see, now we are not talking about the problem, we are not talking about Syria again, and Bashar al-Assad is still there. If Russia is coming to Africa to protect Africans like what he has done in other countries I've seen, like Syria, like North Korea, like to an extent with, with, with uh, uh, China, I would be happy because France has... France and other European nations have put us into the mess we are today. I will not blame Russia for what has been happening in Africa as far as terrorism is concerned. We come to count Boko Haram, Cameroon again, we talk about the Anglophone crisis. I won't blame Russia for that. I will blame those who decided to make the African continent so hard in such a way that Africans do not have even something to eat, and you see them migrating from Africa to America and the European continent. If Russia is coming to protect us, first of all, protect us, maybe using his arm. The use, the use of arm, I'm completely against that. I know that when arms are present somewhere, there will be one, people will die, and we will be the people to die. But if Russia is coming in Africa to protect us in such a way that we should have our own atomic bomb, so as to frighten the Europeans, we should have our own army who can fight with the Europeans, and protect our territory because what we are saying we have to protect our territory we have to protect our resources if russia is coming to help us protect these resources protect our territory they are welcome but if they are coming to africa to sell arms so that they kill my brother in, 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 in libya i will not be happy to sell arms so that my brother maybe maybe my my, 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 my brother in, 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 in central africa in central africa to kill my brother in central africa i'll say no if Russia is coming to Africa to multiply the conflicts we already have in Africa, I will say no. But if they are coming to do a 50-50 business, I will be happy. Therefore, me, France and other countries who have been dependent in Africa will continue to be the sigma of Europe. Instead of Africans traveling to, to Europe, Europeans will, travel to, will, will, will come to Africa and work slavery under us. Because we, our continent is blessed. We have... The, we do not, I do not see any continent in the world out of Africa which is we, 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 I can say which is great like Africa. The great, I'm not so great, I do not say great maybe in military or war. I talk of the natural resources. African natural resources, about 96% is, is yet to be exploited. That is why when most of these European countries, 
And that's why China came to Africa. And China is already invading Africa. But with China, at least there is a 50-50 business. They are made in such a way that even my grandma in the village can even put on a colon at 50 francs. Of which that was very difficult in those when China, when China was out of Africa. Today, we can wear shirts at cheaper rates, cheaper prices, because of the presence of, of, of China in Cameroon. But China, this, Russia should not come and behave to like China in such a way that all our timbers are flying. And I'm hearing that soon, even uh, soon, though, soon those guys will, will, will export, start exporting even our weather trees. I no wonder we we'll get to that same that type of situation. Definitely. So Russia should come to Africa in good faith. I'm saying in good faith. If he's coming to Africa to help us, protect us, like what he has been doing in Syria, like what he has done in, in, in North Korea, like what he has even threatened the United States of America, I'll be fine. And if, if not of Russia, like today we are in a third world war, let us appreciate Vladimir Putin for that. If not of Russia, like we are in a third world war today, it is because they are afraid of Russia. And there is another, there is another, another dog which is just lying, sleeping, is Japan. Saying nothing. Germany is saying nothing. It is because they are afraid of somebody, which is Vladimir Putin. Had it been that, had it been that Vladimir Putin was, wasn't courageous enough, I mean courageous enough, like what we have happening in Europe, like the social bomb in Europe, will have come to, will have come to Africa because of what? the suffering they inflict on this particular city, especially the season from Syria. Just imagine that this war in Syria was caused by Europeans. And Russia, Russia, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, came to, came to realize that if he allows this European to invade Syria, the world will be in a total chaos. That is the reason why he decided to really protect Bashar al-Assad. And I am telling the president of Russia, please, if you are coming to Africa to protect us, you are welcome. But if you are coming to Africa to sell your arms so that this arm will be used against us, Please, stay in your country. That is what I have to say. Okay, uh, thank you so very much, Mr. Kala. Mr. Taro, mm -hmm. now let's look at uh, the challenges. We know Africa was colonized by other countries, and uh, from our preamble, I'll always go back to that. Russia helped many African countries in their quest for independence. Now, do you think uh, the, the, the Russia now coming to, 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 to strengthen ties with other African countries will not pose a threat or a challenge with uh, Africa and their colonial, colonial masters? Thank you very much, uh, my Paris. I knew that this problem, this question will rise up like this because we have colonial master that colonized the French countries, we have Britain, we have USA. Now, I told you earlier on, Russia knew what, the president of Russia knew what he's doing right now. I believe I've, the co panelists have just said, he's coming to Africa to be able to defend African country, they are really welcome. Because I know, I told you earlier on, that Russia is a very independent country that fear nobody when it comes to war. Eh? And you will notice all the propaganda of uh, Donald Trump Fighting Russia is not going to happen because Gunnarton himself has a skeleton in his combat, which, if Putin begins to disclose all things all out, Trump will be in problem. But to come, I want to tell you, with, I want to continue with my analysis to see what was the basic, based on cooperation between Russia and Africa. Yeah. Yeah. As you have said, Russia activities in Africa have not been without a controversy. There is always a problem. One thing I want you to know is that everybody has this, uh, there is always in a disadvantage and advantage in everything we do on this earth. There will be negative side and there will be 
the a positive, positive side. side. Of course. What we usually want is that let your positive side be more than the negative side. Because that is the main reason, even the Bible, that there is no man on this earth that doesn't have a weakness. Everybody that God has created, there is a place that you are weak. But you can only use the strong area to correct the weak area. And I believe, do you know, in June, that the foreign affairs minister have announced that next year they are going to hold a summit like other forum, like China has been doing, France has been doing, so that they want to play the field. Because that is where your question is going to. Because they want to play also in the field. That Let us see who is going to win at the end of the day. Because they are also interested to now protect Africa. Because as the other co panelists have said, Africa is rich in natural resources. And there is no way that European countries or Western world cannot do without Africa. You know, until we change our mentality, there is a mentality that African countries that need to change that. It's not until you reach Europe that you can become somebody. You say everything that you want to become in life is in your hand. As a man lay his bed, so he shall lie on it. If African can begin to realize that we have a potential, we have what it takes. Because if you don't have anything to give, nobody will look for you. It's because you have an answer. That is the reason why people will be looking for you. Because African has an answer, African continent has an answer to the world. That is the reason why the Western world will never rest. Because they have to come to Africa. Because we are their, uh, their own resources. Because they gain a lot of things in Africa. Like uh, as the Iman have said, see uh, Romanian that is in, in Central Africa. It's enough for us to make our own weapon in Africa. We don't need to. If African also can tie with each other. The problem we are also having in Africa today is that all our leaders, there is no fear of God in them. Because the Bible declared the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And he said the wisdom is the principal thing. In getting wisdom, you should get understanding. It, this is the item that the African leaders should cooperate within one another to be able to assist one another when there is a problem in a neighboring country, it, it, we have to know that we need to help ourselves just so that there can be peace. But what African lead, uh, leaders are doing today, they are so self-centered, egoism, proud, nobody wants to help others to succeed. Everybody is just looking how he's going to serve his own country to the uh, uh, detriment of others. And at this junction, I know that it will arise, and that is the main reason why the foreign Afri uh, affairs have said that next year they are also going to have a forum with the leadership of Africa so that they can play in the field. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, all right, uh, Sheikh Mohammed. Let's talk about industrialization. Mm. We know Russia is already uh, 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 an industrial country, industrialized, I beg your pardon, nation. And now, will it come into Africa, help the continent uh, uh, attain that objective of becoming an industrialized continent in the years ahead? Let's look at the positive aspect of this marriage, yeah, Russia-Africa. Right. Well, since uh, you restricted me to that aspect of industrialization, because I wanted to say that in every conflict, the first victim is the truth. And some of what the, some of our, our colleagues in Yaoundé have said concerning Russia uh, perhaps leads to, uh, it's not, uh, there are some aspects of it which are not quite understood. Russia is not as guilty or as bad as, uh, as he painted them to be. But well, that is not the issue. You asked about industrialization. The first issue concerning industrialization, it doesn't depend on Russia at all. It depends on the Africans themselves. Or coming now to the terms of their agreement. Right. Now, do, do Africans themselves 
have the initiative and have the psychological confidence that they can build those industries? Or are they just waiting for someone to come and save them, someone to come and do it for themselves? That, that, is, a, the, that is the first point. Russia has an economy. They also strive to grow. But Russia is small compared, for example, to America. I'll give you an example. The official defense spending, annual defense budget for America is about $500 billion per annum. The case of Russia is $50 billion. So you see, Russia, in the days of the Soviet Union, it was big, but now it has been, uh, they've allowed themselves, to, they've lost in this geopolitical game, and a lot of their satellite states have been confiscated, and they, that is a long, it's a long history. But coming back to industrialization, the first act, the main actor who will determine whether Russia helps to industrialize Africa are the Africans themselves. What would they require from Russia? Buy arms? Buying arms will not lead to industrialization. Look at what the president, Mohammed uh, of, uh, uh, of Nigeria, yeah. uh, Muretala Mohammed. When the French wanted to sell cars, he said, no. If you want to sell cars here, you build them here. That, now, that is now channeling the industrialization in a certain direction. Once they started building cars there, he forced them to employ Nigerians in British petroleum, and after these Nigerians have been, had been well trained in their job experience, he now looked for some pretext that Britain is co collaborating with South Africa, which then was apartheid, decided to nationalize British petroleum and convert it to African petroleum. Then it became an African thing. It is in that way that you can actually confiscate uh, this development strategy and make it to become a, an African controlled thing. Look at what Gaddafi did. He decided to spend money to put the first African satellite and because of that initiative, we've seen recently a certain polytechnic in Ghana succeeded in putting a satellite in space. That is a continuation from what Gaddafi has started. So Russia is not going to decide of its own volition to industrialize Africa. That would, they, don't, they have no interest to do that. They want to sell their products. It is up to us to condition their arrival in such a way that it is most beneficial to Africans. And for that to happen, we have to be united. Because otherwise, if the Russians go to there, say, we just want to sell, they say, no, you have to do this. They will go to another person. He will accept, and then they express the whole thing. We have to act in unison. We have to act together. And we should, uh, the African leaders should stop being as cowardly as they were during the time of Gaddafi. They allowed the cowardly sat aside and allowed these Western people to kill Gaddafi. If they stood up in unison, that would not have happened. So, industrialization, yes, but Africans have to lead the way. Africans have to show the initiative. They have to show the will that we, the, we, we are willing to collaborate with you, but we can only do it in such a way that it leads to our emancipation and industrialization. If they do that, that can happen. If they don't, Russia will sell its products and get its money and go away. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's uh, get to Mr. Shu Gerard. We are looking at the relations between Russia and uh, the USA. Do you think uh, that tense relationship is the reason Russia is turning back to Africa? What can you say about this? Yes, um, Russia-US relation is, is strained. Because if we, if we look at uh, the fight between the United States and Russia now, it's, it's questionable because Russia wants to overpower the United States of America. We all know that America is the police of the world in terms of economic, in terms of politics, in terms of whatever financial domain, America is the first in the world. Now, Russia wants to encounter that to bring back the history of the Soviet Union. We all know, we, we have been seeing his tactic I in mean, the game uh, Putin has been playing in the war now. That already shows that. He wants to make remain a sense of the past, what his forefather did. He wants to bring back a, 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 a Russia to that position so that it will be history that Russia today is because of President Bar uh, Vladimir Putin. A colleague said that uh, Russia aimed to, um, to uh, in not of Russia, they would have made a world war in Syria. No. Of course, not rejected our rally. Russia wanted to provoke a third world war in Syria. The foreign minister, Ravvo, said it. That if America intervened in Syria, there would be a long, unend war in Syria. God's statement 
was in March last year. Now, Russia wanted to to tell America that no, enough is not for you. You claim that you can do this in the world. You can do this in the world. Now, nah, Russia, I want to also intervene. That is why anywhere America is going, Russia is following. We all saw uh, the union, I mean, the meeting between King Jong-un and President uh, 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 Trump in Singapore. At the eve of that meeting, Russia, the, the foreign minister went to, I mean, to uh, North Korea, inviting the North Korean leader to Russia. After knowing that Kim is to we will be meeting with, with Trump. We we'll meeting with Trump. So we, we also the game that Russia is, is trying to play. Now, when Americans step in, the US election that the American Congress, the American Senate is investigating all the time, every day, was true. Russia had the election. Because Putin was happy that a Trump is coming to power since Obama rejected him relationship between Russia and America will be good. It will be straightened. But little did he know that, come, that, that Trump come to power. You know, President Trump, we must understand that President Trump coming to power in this world is sent by God. God sent him to resolve a, a, a problem that no other American uh, leader had ever resolved. We all know. You are seeing what's happening between Palestine and Israel. The capital of the U.S. is, is now in, the, uh, 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 in, in Jerusalem, which Obama tried no way. We also the changes in which uh, President Trump is doing in America, even though people criticize him, but he's doing something right. So, America remains America in this world. Nobody can dispute that. America remains America. And where America is, nobody can, uh, can step there. Because America is monitoring you, digging you to know your intention, and when, he, uh, uh, and when he understand your intention, that's how he'll deal with you. We all know that. So, America and Russia, we all know what is happening in the world now between America and Russia. Anyway, America, Russia want to counter American influence in Africa. And that is why you find her, you find Russia coming to Africa, mingling, come to Africa, signing a call with the Central African Republic, signing a call with the Democratic Republic of Congo, so as to ignite her influence in, uh, in Africa. That's a game, a tactic game, tricks that President Putin is playing. We all, and we have been monitoring this, we all know that. So, I, I, I Economically, I mean, you are talking of industrialization. Economically, I think that Africa is matured now to stand firm and say that no, enough is enough in the West. We can develop our economy alone. We can transform our raw materials mm, uh, 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 into finished goods and use them. But now we saw that when when we keep signing a court with with the West, do you know how many accords come have signed with China? Do you know how many accords come have signed with Germany and Russia? We are saying that we are not capable enough to develop an economy. Africa is rich in resources. We all know. Look at the double rice in Cameroon. It's not developed. We all we are all dependent on imported rice. Imported rice. I'm telling you that even double rice in this country is developed. Even the cocoa uh, 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 industry in the north is developed. A, a Cameroon will be will, uh, will be a developed nation. The vision of President Bia by 2035 is a good vision. If every African leader can conceive that vision and put into practice a policy, a mechanism that that vision will succeed, I'm telling you that that statement that President Bongo made that we, Africa need Russia, will not be like that again. We will say that, yes, Africa can do its own, we can do, we do our own part now, we can develop our economy, we can be proud to say that this good, this industry, this television, this machine, this camera is produced in Africa, or this cell phone is produced in Africa. And not again coming from the way because we are Africa is a dumping ground. I mean, for Western goods, for Western goods, they are here in Africa. Can okay. we proud to say that we can that we, we can be able to produce this thing our own and export to Europe to the satisfaction of uh, of the West? So Africa should maintain her stand. Africa should remain Africa and to say enough is enough now and go ahead with our internal industrialization. Thank you. Okay, thank you as well, Mr. Shu Gerard. Uh, we have uh, less than five minutes uh, to be together. Uh, Mr. Talbon Kal, please can you give us your concluding uh, statement? Uh, of course, at the end, we, we want to see that Russia coming to Africa, it should be beneficial to both the countries. We want a concluding statements, which are, of course, positive. Uh. 
I will first of all get to my co-panelist telling him that uh, Russia, America has been in Africa for long and they've not hurt Africa in any way as far as protection is concerned. Before America, before President Trump met with the president of North Korea, Russia has been in North Korea for long. Before America could meet whosoever, he said of Trump taking a decision, Obama has worked it, before Obama Bush has worked it, he just came to accomplish what was already put in place for long. It's not like Bush uh, or, or Trump came and said that is it. So, in order to conclude, Clarice, Russia present in Africa, I can take it with mixed feeling. If it is a blessing, welcome. But if it is a curse, we can rebuke that one. Vladimir Putin is somebody I respect most. Had it been that America could attack Russia like the world, it's not what we are talking today. And I want to tell my brothers, Africans, we cannot get up one day and decide. We cannot get up just one day to tell Africa that we can create industries and all the like. We need to learn it from somebody. If Russia is coming to help us put some industries, good and fine. If they can develop our dub rights, because I know the government in place we have in Cameroon has failed in all the dimension. If our dub right can be developed by the Russian, good and, and fine. If the war, the war in Central African Republic, Russia can help the Central African Republic president to stop that particular war between the Muslim and the, and the Christian, yeah. good and fine. Because France has been unable to do that. And Russia knowing fully that Africans is suffering as a result of European invention. That's the reason why they are trying to help Central African Republic maybe to come out with a strategy that can help Central African Republic to maybe see peace. Since that, since that France and the UN are there, not, uh, Central African Republic has no known peace. If Russia is coming to bring that particular peace, they are welcome. I still mean they are welcome. So if Russia is coming to help Africa or to protect Africa, they are welcome. That is what I have to say. Okay, uh, Mr. Tao, your concluding words. Despite the willingness of Russia to play a role, a more meaningful role in Africa, its ability is constrained because Russia lacks the financial muscles and scale to rescue the so Soviet Union success in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, my concluding remarks are uh, to begin with, Russia has had a bad experience because the Americans, when they had the Soviet Union, they used a, uh, a tactic which could not be imagined by many. They used religion to manipulate and discourage Russia in Afghanistan for several reasons. I won't get to that. They say Al-Qaeda and so on. Mm -hmm. And Russia, because of that, the Soviet Union was uh, disintegrated into several satellite states. They used the same uh, terrorists trained by America. But the Mujahideen were financed by America up to the tune of more than $10 billion. People think it's an Islamic revolution. It has nothing to do with Islam. They used the same people to destabilize these uh, satellites to uh, Russian, uh, uh, sorry, Soviet states in order to isolate Russia. And they did it until only Chechnya and Ukraine were left. So Russia had to stand up. Now concerning Syria, there are four countries now in the world which, whose central banks are not controlled by the global elite. They've done that down to four now. Cuba, Iran, Syria, and North Korea. So you're going to find that for the, for the foreseeable future, those four countries, you always find trouble turning around them because they want to bring them under control so they can now be, the whole world can now be controlled by the global elite. That was to dissipate uh, what you people are saying about Russia and so on. Coming back to Africa, like I said before, the Africans have to set the pace. We should understand that China, up to the 20th century, China had trains which were running on coal. That is, they put the fire, 
You know, like our, our mothers do in the kitchen. They put fire and the fire boils water and steam trains are carrying people all over China. They did that because that was the only thing they could manufacture. And they realized that it is better to use what you can make than get electric trains with magnetic levitation and so on from Europe. Until you reach the level where you yourself can do that. If Africans can learn that and not want the, the fastest gadgets, to, they don't want to use the uh, things which they see on Hollywood movies, which the actors are doing right now. If they can be patient enough to wait for themselves to grow and be able to produce their own things, then Africa can be useful in that they will help Africans to develop industry. But if they want these things quickly, fast, then they will just have to buy and they will be selling raw materials at a giveaway price for a song and sixpence in order to get and will never develop. We will remember, continue to be economic, psychological, social, cultural, and financial economic, and slaves. That's all I have to say. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Show Gerard, please, uh, can we have your concluding words, uh, just one minute before we cut it off the program? Yes, um, Africa should exchange her raw material for technology. We should exchange raw material for technology and also develop our economy and not for money. We should stop signing financial accord, but we should, but we should be signing by technological accord to get their knowledge. And by so doing, we are going to develop our own economy and we'll stop depending on the West for her. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you also, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say thank you. We have come to the end of today's edition. That is the Path African Debater. We want to thank you all for trusting uh, your Pan African television, of course, Afric Media. And we also say uh, immense thank you still to our panelists for making uh, this program what well why well, we beg to leave you now but that's not all keep enjoying programs on your pan-african television bye bye for now and see you some other time yes that's time of uh, yeah